Greetings uh, last time, and today we're going to be doing Circle of Numbers. Now, if you've been following the stream, you might think, well, it seems a little familiar. Didn't, didn't we already do Circle of Numbers before? And as it turns out, yeah, this is one of these uh, challenges that appears in both the intro and the core. So there are a few of those. We'll, uh, we'll see some others along the way. But yeah, task 30 in the intro was our Circle of Numbers last time. So... Uh, if you want, you know, you can just look at the video from the intro. It's task number 30, so we have done it already. And uh, and we did it in kind of like, I guess I'll say like a, a bit of an eccentric way. We actually ended up creating sort of like a matrix that showed this circle of numbers. So we actually created the circle of numbers and it was a lot of fun. Uh, but this time I, I want to do something a bit different with it. So basically... Um, we won't actually create like a, a matrix that represents the circle of numbers. I want to think about it in, I guess I'd say more of like a, a data structures kind of way. So I want to look at this in not in terms of like having an actual picture of a circle of numbers. I want to think about it more as having sort of like an interactable object that's going to represent the circle of numbers. Okay, so the first way we could do this is basically just create an array, you know, something pretty simple. And then we'll make that array just sort of rotate in the same way that the circle of numbers uh, would, in the same way that we want to. So we could say something like, uh, let circle be assigned the value of, and we'll just make it this empty array for now. We'll load it up with some numbers, so we'll just do a little for loop beginning at zero, uh, ending just before n, and we'll just do something like circle dot push. I guess i, you know, because like we want the number itself in there. And then if we go to the end here, let's just try returning circle, and we'll see what we get. So yeah, that's pretty much what we want. This is at least the numbers we're looking for, right? If n is ten, we want. Uh, all the digits from zero to nine. Okay, but then I also want to build in this extra little functionality. So we'll call this uh, this function rotate. Re rotate, yeah, there we go. And basically the way it's gonna work is we're just gonna say, um, let element be assigned the value of circle dot pop. So it's gonna take an element off the end. So keep in mind push basically puts an element onto the end of the array. Pop is gonna remove it from the end of the array. Now there are also other keywords we could be using, like for example, uh, shift would remove the element from the, from the left end, and uh, unshift would put the element onto the left end. I, I guess we should decide which way we want to rotate. I mean, if we're rotating, uh, like if we're rotating our numbers, hold on a sec. If we're rotating our numbers like this way, then basically what we want to be doing is taking this element over here, like, uh, I guess, shifting the zero off the end, and then pushing it onto this end of the array. So we're ultimately going to have the same number of elements. That's not going to change. Uh, but it's just where those elements are. And, and most of them are going to be, like, relatively in the same order. It's just this first one ends up at the end. Or, you know, if we wanted to rotate the other way, then it would be sort of the opposite of that, you know? If we're going this way, we would take the last element, so we would pop that off, and then we would unshift it onto the end of the array here. So I guess it just depends which way we want to rotate it. But for now, we'll, uh, we'll go to pop and... Uh, then we want to do array dot unshift, I think it was, right? Array dot unshift. Wait, it's not called array, it's called circle. Okay, great. Circle dot unshift element. There we go. Uh, yeah, that's not really going to do anything because we haven't rotated it yet, but let's, let's try that now. Let's just uh, rotate it. Yeah. Okay, so we rotated it one time, and now we see that the 9 is in front instead of... Uh, instead of zero, where we started last time. And same sort of thing for uh, for these other ones as well. I mean, we've just rotated it one time. Yeah, there we go. And, and, you know, like we could do this more than once. We could rotate it, let's say, three times, and we'll see where we end up there. So, okay, cool. Yeah, so seven, eight, and nine over here. Yeah, same with that one. I mean, we're, again, yeah, just rotating the same number of times for each of them. Yeah. Cool. So that's kind of working the way we expected, I think. Uh, like I was saying before, we could also say instead of a pop, we could say that this one is a shift and instead of an unshift, we can make this one a push and then it's going to rotate it in the other direction in that case. So 
it's up to you, you know, whichever one of these things you prefer, it's up to you. Uh, okay, so let's see. I think I want to change this a little bit. So before we get into the rotating here, let's just see what we're getting from our circle to begin with. There we go. Okay, cool. So I sort of want to start this actually, you know, like I don't necessarily want to start the circle like this if our first number is going to be two. I kind of want to start it at that first number two. So instead of just pushing I over here, let's push first number plus I. So that we actually start at that first number and then add on the difference from there. We'll see what we get in that case. Okay, so the problem here is that it's going all the way up to 11. We actually don't want that. We want nine to be like the last one and then for it to restart at zero and then one and then it'll get to two after we you know, loop around. Uh, so how are we gonna do that? Well, basically we'll use a modulus, but mod what? Well, if we want the 10 to turn into a zero, the 11 to turn into one, I guess mod 10 would make the most sense here. So let's uh, try that. We'll see what we get. Okay, so that's good then, right? That's what we're looking for. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then zero and one. I think this'll be, yeah, same thing, except it starts at a seven, so that's good. Uh, this one, is that what we're expecting? No, not quite, because we don't want a four in there. We want a zero in there, so that's no good. And the reason is because, well, 10 is no longer relevant to this one. It's four that we should be taking the mod of. So really, I mean, it's N. We want to say like the length of this array, that's what we want to take the modulus of. And there we go. Okay, so that one's working. That one is also working, which is great. This one appears to be working. It's starting at three. It goes up to a maximum of five, resets at zero. Yeah, this is doing what we want it to do. Okay, cool. So, well, that's nice, right? Not bad. Let's, uh, let's start rotating it now. So we'll say while, do you want to do a while? Uh, let's do a four, actually. Four, let... Uh, rotations be assigned a value of zero and we want to make sure that rotations is less than I'm gonna say n divided by two so rotations all right similar words in there sorry about that it makes it tougher with the autocomplete so okay basically we're saying rotation starts at zero goes all the way to n divided by two well minus one technically because it's a less than strictly less than and not a less than or equal to and what are we gonna do here well First of all, we're going to do a console log of what our uh, circle looks like. Oops. And then we're just going to do a rotate. Yeah, so we're going to log it and we're going to do a rotate. And then we'll do a nice little uh, console log on the end here as well for uh, our final state of the circle. And then, well, I guess we're just returning the circle after that, so not going to make much of a difference. But yeah, cool. Check it out. So couple things to notice here. Uh, mainly I'm just putting in the console logs just to see how this is all working, but we start with this array that contains the numbers we're looking for and it begins with our first number. Let me just make this a little bigger. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it starts with our first number, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then back to zero and one, uh, and then we rotate it a bunch of times. How many times? Well, basically the idea is we want the number that's directly opposite from the one we start with, right? So we start with two, we want it to be directly opposite going right to the seven here. So, well, how many times do we have to rotate it to get there? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five, it's half of 10. Maybe that's not a coincidence. I mean, if there were four elements, we'd want to rotate it two times, just half of four. So basically the idea is that we want to rotate it n divided by two many times. And if we look at our guaranteed constraints, it's an important thing to do. We notice that n is an even integer. So dividing it by two is always going to give us a whole number, which is you know, good to know. Okay, so uh, at this point, something to notice is that after all these rotations happen, the number we're getting right at the beginning of our array is the number we're looking for. I mean, in both cases so far, yeah, in this case as well, and in that one too. So I'm thinking if we were to just do like a circle at zero, maybe we'll find what we're looking for. It seems like we are. Keep in mind, there are other ways we could do this, you know, like we could do like a dot shift or something like that, but that's a bit destructive. That's actually gonna modify the final array here. I don't really wanna have to modify it if we don't have to, so let's just go with that. 
Let's give this a run and there we go. Okay, so nice stuff. That passed all the hidden tests and it got us 4% of the way through the uh, core section here. So that's, that's good, that's encouraging. We're making a dent. Okay, so I guess we could wrap it up there, but I don't wanna. I wanna get a little more in depth with this thing because something I'm noticing about this is this could be a little bit costly, right? I mean, we're looking at this array and we're basically modifying the entire thing at every step. Like for every rotation, we're basically just completely modifying this array. We're changing the length of it. We're removing an element. We're putting in another element. I feel like, you know, it could be costly over time. These, uh, these operations could start to cost us. Like, you know, what if we had to rotate this 10,000 times or something like that? It, it could be a lot of work, you know? It's basically like patching this together. It's like, uh, you know, cutting off the end, putting it, reattaching it to the beginning. Maybe there's another way we could deal with this. And I did mention this idea of data structures before. Now, you'll notice uh, the first time we looked at this, we were treating it as a circle of numbers, we were finding the angles and stuff like that. And uh, based on that, we were just like, okay, now add the angle, add, uh, you know, um, add an angle of pi and get, get the new value, that sort of thing. Here, we don't really care as much about angles. You know, we're using the fact that they're equally spaced as our main thing. So, <clears throat> We used an array for this one, but I wanna use a different type of data structure for this, uh, for this next attempt. So uh, specifically, here, let's get a cool color in here. And basically the idea is I, I wanna use something like a linked list. So we'll start with a node at zero and that will point to the node with a value of one. We'll get one to point to the node of the value of two and you know, et, et cetera. We'll just, we'll use a linked list. We'll have it go all the way around here as a, as a linked list often does. And then the thing that will distinguish this from a typical linked list is instead of it just having a next element, you know, going from the head to the tail sort of thing, it's gonna get joined up at the end. So this is the idea, this is what's gonna distinguish our modified structure here. It's that it's gonna be an actual circle. Every element is gonna be linked to the next one. The final element is gonna be linked to the first one. So it's just gonna go on forever. So that's the idea. That's what we wanna create here. So let's do it. We're gonna, uh, well, first let me just grab that magic pixel. Oh, come on. Yeah, there we go. Uh, all right, just wanted a little more room here. So we'll say that this one is gonna be, well, first of all, let me just, yeah, that's about all the extra room I can make, I think. I'm gonna copy this, paste it in, and we'll call this circle numbers one. Uh, okay, so that, now let's uh, basically just completely restart this. We're, we're gonna rethink the whole thing. Now, we wanna make a linked list here, right? Uh, so, first thing we should do is make a node. I'm gonna call it circle node, and it's gonna have a value of number for its constructor, okay? So if, uh, if you don't have a lot of experience creating objects, uh, if you're not familiar with linked lists, we got into these in the intro, I think it was task 56, uh, it was called file naming. We got into linked lists there. We got pretty deep into them actually. So check out that video if, uh, if you need a primer on this stuff. And of course, you know, let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns as we're going through this one. But basically the idea is we're creating a new object. This function we have here is sort of like, it's a constructor. So it's a function that we're gonna run every time we wanna make a new instance of this type of object. So, uh, you know, what I mean by that is like, we've got lots of built-ins, you know, we've got arrays, we've got like um, strings. These, these are like, uh, you know, special uh, types of objects sort of thing. If you want to make a new array, uh, what, do you, what, do we, what do you want it to have in it sort of thing? You know, what do you want to instantiate it with? Uh, it's kind of like the idea that we can have multiple different kinds of arrays. You know, you, you, we could have like down here, we made one called circle. We could have made another one with some other information in it. The point is, we might have more than one circle node here. So we want them to all have some properties. What properties? Well, specifically number, which is just gonna take on the value that we feed into the constructor here. And it's gonna have a next, like we were talking about before. We sort of want each of these to point to the next one. So they're all gonna have a number and a next. And that's pretty much it. It's not gonna start with anything for the next. We're gonna handle that within our other thing over here, which is gonna be, we'll call it linked circle, I guess. 
And uh, this is going to be sort of like the object representing the entire list here. So not just one node of it, but the entire thing. That's the idea here. Okay, so let's get started with this. What do we, what do we want to do here? Well, we're going to have a property called uh, position, pause. And it's gonna start as a null, just like the next up here, but it's gonna kind of represent like where we are in the list, you know? So like we, re we recognize that all of these are gonna be linked together. One is gonna lead to the next one, but we wanna know like, where are we? So like we wanna start here at the two, we want that to be our first number. So that should be our original this.pause for, for our list. It's gonna be our original position. And then from there, we'll just, we'll be able to move through, change the position, uh, however we want. Etc. We'll find out. But the main thing is the position is going to start as uh, yeah nothing basically. And then uh, what do we want to do here? Well, this is our constructor, so I kind of want to be able to create this based on a number and a position. So uh, maybe I'll just call that num for now instead of n, just because there's an n up here already. So yeah. Okay, cool. So what do we want to do with this? Well, we're gonna start with a couple nodes. We're gonna say first node is null. And we're also gonna say last node is also null. Now, why do we care about these things, first node and last node? Mainly, I just wanna keep track of these so that we can do that final step where we basically say the last node dot next is the first node. You know, linking up the circle, like uh, uh, closing the loop, so to speak. So that's what we want to do. That's why we want to keep track of these. Now what we're going to do is basically run through our number here. We're going to do a loop like we had before, something like this. And uh, basically we're going to create new nodes for each of these numbers. Kind of like what we were doing over here when we were just doing a circle dot push. It's going to be the same sort of thing. It's going to be a little more complicated just because we're dealing with uh, uh, maybe a more complicated type of object. So. We're gonna make a new circle node is the idea. It's gonna have i as its number, <coughs> pardon me. So uh, when I put in the i over here, that's like number up here, that's that's the idea. So this is gonna go from zero to, well, not quite num, but like one less than num. Okay, so we're making our, our node over here and we basically wanna say, well, is there a first node already? Have we found the first node? And if not, we basically wanna say, well, this is the first node then. First node is gonna be node. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, and uh, let's see, went a little too far there. What else? Well, if it's not the first node, then what are we gonna do? Well, if it's not the first node, then, actually, let me handle that in just a sec. First, I just wanna say one way or another, at the end of this, we're gonna say last node is gonna be node. Because uh, when we move on to the next iteration of the loop, we want to be able to reference last node. Over here, it doesn't have a value. Uh, so we basically want to say, well, if this isn't the first node, then you must have a last node, right? So that's why I put the else in here. If it's not the first node, well, there's a last node in memory already. So we, we can basically just say at that point, uh, last node dot next is node, this new one that we just created. Okay. Uh, Let's see. I mean, let me know if you have any questions on any of this stuff here, if it's, uh, if it's not making sense or anything like that. The other thing I wanna put in here is just if i happens to be the position we're looking for, then we basically just wanna say this.position is assigned the value of node. You know, it's like, this is the one, right? This is the one that has that position value that you were looking for. It's the one where you wanted to start. So yeah, we'll do that. And then basically at the end of this, after we complete the loop, we just want to say last node dot next is going to be first node. So keep in mind, first node is only going to get assigned once. And it's just if there isn't already a first node. So it's basically just going to be the first number that we feed in here. That's going to be the first node. Everything after that is going to basically eventually take on the value of last node. We're gonna say, well, whatever the last node was, you know, so actually hold on, let's run through it for a sec. So let's say that, uh, yeah, that we give it a number of 10 and a position of two, okay? So the way it's gonna work is it's gonna say, first of all, first node and last node, these are null. And then uh, it's gonna go through its list, or gonna go through the loop, sorry. So it's gonna start at zero, gonna go almost all the way, well, basically up to nine is the idea. 
So when it's zero, it's gonna say, okay, we've got this new node, it's zero. It's, uh, it's basically the one that we see right over there. It's, uh, hold on a sec, I need a nice color here. So it's this one right here. So that's our new node. And what are we gonna do with that new node? Well, do we have a first node? Oh, we don't have a first node. So this is gonna be our first node. I'll just say F to represent the first node. Okay. So that's our first node. And then we say last node is node. So also this is going to be the last node too. L for last. Okay. So it's both our first node and our last node. That's fine. And we say, well, is I the position? I is zero right now. So our position was two. No, it's not the position. Okay. And we'll move on to the next one. So we're going to make another node here. New circle node at I. I is now one though because of the I plus plus. So now this is our circle node. And what are we going to say? Well, is it the first node? No, it's not. So last node dot next is node. Well, this one here is node. Last node is this one. So that means we're going to get some dot next action here. And there we go. So now the zero is linking to the one. Well, that's great. That's what we want. And then after that, we say last node is node. So last node is no longer the zero. Now it represents the one. And let me just break the link on that real quick. There we go. Okay. So our last is one now. Okay, cool. That's great. So then we keep this, uh, we keep this running. We say, oh, oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot this part over here. Um, is I position? I is one, position is two. No, it's not. Okay, so we move on to the next one and we say, make a new node. It's got a value of two. The last node, uh, well, is there a first node? Yeah, there is. Okay, so the last node dot next is this one. Last node was one dot next is gonna be two. And now last node is gonna be two. It's gonna assign that value. And then uh, another thing we're gonna say, oh, hey, um, I right now, it's two. Is that the same as pause? Oh, it is. Yeah, the first number is two. So uh, this one is going to be this dot position. So uh, I guess I'll just say position. Yeah, it's going to be this one. Okay, and then this is going to keep moving. You know, we still have a last node that's two. It's going to eventually point to the three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It goes all the way around until we get to this one, and this will be our last node. Everything else we'll say is all uh, linked up in here. Sorry, that's a little sloppy, but hopefully it gets the point across. And let me just quickly erase this one over here. So, okay, we've got position. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. So we've got position, we've got first node over here, we've got last node over here, and this last step right here basically says last node dot next, it's first node. So this was our last one, dot next, first node. Hey, check it out, it's all linked now. They're all linked. Our position is two, but we can just say not dot next, dot next, dot next, dot next, dot next. We could do that infinitely because it's circle. It's all linked up now. Or at least I hope it is. Let's uh, let's verify that fact. So in order to verify that, I'm gonna build in another uh, another little method here. So method is a type of function contained within an object. I'm gonna call this one display. It's not gonna take an argument because it's just gonna display everything that's in our circle of numbers right now. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna start an array, which is just gonna begin as empty, and we're gonna say for uh, let node be assigned the value of this dot position. So it's gonna start at whatever position we're in. It's gonna go until, uh, actually wait a sec. Okay, okay. Let's think about this. So I want this to basically go until it encounters whatever the value of uh, position was, right? So, or at least that's one way, could, like technically we could do like a, like I be assigned the value of zero, I is less than N, kind of like um, what we were doing down here, you know, uh, or here, yeah. We could do something like that, but yeah. I, I prefer to do this in a more object oriented kind of way, I guess. So I'm gonna actually start by putting this dot pause dot number in here. I'm gonna say whatever our position is, uh, the number that we have there, so in this case, the two, we're gonna put that into the array. It's gonna start with that. And then uh, node is actually gonna start as our next value. The reason I'm doing it this way is so that we can say, keep this going until this dot position dot number is equal to, uh, well, actually, hold on a sec. Basically, uh, it's not this dot pod that we're going to be changing. It's node that we're going to be changing, right? So we basically want to keep this going until node is equal to this dot position, you know, until they're the same thing. And then to iterate, we'll say node is node dot next. 
And you might be looking at that and thinking, uh, no, there's no dot next. I mean, is that safe? Like, do we want to put in another kind of conditional saying like while it does have a next? And normally for a linked list, yeah, we would want to check to see if node actually has a next. But here we don't have to check it because we know it's going to have a next. We saw the linked list before, or sorry, the linked circle before. It's, uh, it's a closed loop, so it should be able to do this forever. Uh, it is eventually going to encounter position, right? This dot position. It's eventually going to return, in this case, to the two here. So when it does, we'll stop the loop and say, oh, that's enough. Thanks. Okay, so what do we want the loop to actually do? We want it to push the current number into the array. So node.number. Now keep in mind, I used a let statement over here, let node be assigned value of this thing, which means node actually only exists within this for loop. So if I were to do like return node over here, it'd be like, what are you talking about? Reference error, what's node? Undefined, I don't know what that is. So luckily we don't need to do that. We just need to put array here. Okay, cool. So. <clears throat> That's a lot of stuff. I mean, this basically, yeah, yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Well, let me know if you have any questions on any of this stuff, but for now, let me just clean that up a bit and I guess we'll make one of these, you know? So we could say, let circle be assigned the value of new linked circle. Uh, what's it gonna take as its input? N and first, first number, first number. That's a lot of characters to type. All right, so, uh, Oh, oh, no, 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 there we go. Okay, cool. We're just making a new linked circle. We're instantiating it. We're making a new one. Just like over here, we're instantiating an array, you know, same sort of thing. So, uh, okay, that's our new circle. And we want to return circle dot, what did I call this? Display? Yeah, display, circle dot display. And that's a function. So we actually want to call the function. Don't forget the parentheses on that one. Circle dot display and look what we're getting. It's what we want, you know? We've got something that starts at two, it contains the numbers from zero to nine, and it loops back around when we get to the end there. This is pretty cool. We're getting basically the same results as what we had before, uh, but in kind of a neat way, in a way that I think is gonna make our rotations a little less costly. Because again, like I was saying, every time we did a rotation before, we're taking an element off the end of the array, we're putting the element back onto the beginning of the array or vice versa. Here, check it out. Let's get our uh, rotate function here, this.rotate. Keep in mind, we have a linked circle here. So basically, uh, since everything has a next here, this could just keep going on forever. If I wanna rotate this thing, this is actually quite nice. Check it out. This dot position is going to be assigned the value of this dot position dot next. Done. That's it. You know, we can basically just say if this is where the position is, if it's at two, well, what's the next there? Oh, three. Okay, that's our new position. Done. All we need to do. That's all we need to do. Okay, so let's uh, let's try that. Let's just do a single. Oh, I can't just do rotate because it's a method of circle now. So and it also has two keys. Okay, there we go. So circle dot rotate and notice now we're not starting at the two we're starting at the three uh, and here we'll start at the eight instead of the seven okay and then what was this one yeah starting at the two instead of the one i think our rotating is working i think it's working so maybe we'll do the same thing as what we had before like uh you know downstairs whoa what's going on with my mouse getting extra choppy okay uh that's strange we'll we'll just try to use the keyboard for now uh, uh, all right, four, let i be assigned the value of zero, i is less than n divided by two, i plus plus, rotate, and is that gonna work? No, rotate's not defined. You mean circle dot rotate. There we go. Hey, hey, okay, there we go. So we're getting the seven, wow, well, okay, I don't know. Maybe I'm running out of batteries or something? This is really, all right, that's better. All right, so seven, two, I mean, we're, we're matching up, you know, we're getting the element that we're looking for. So we could just say, you know, something like this, circle.display at zero, right? Uh, but the thing is, like, in some ways, this whole display thing is kind of defeating the purpose because, well, okay, it, we could do the same thing that we did in the other one where we do a rotate and before we do the rotate, we do like a little console log. 
of, uh, of circle.display. So if we're going to do it this way, then I have to say this is probably actually worse than what we have down here because in this case, we're actually creating an entire new array every time we want to do this uh, circle.display. Like, you know, we're creating the array here, we're returning that array. Yeah, it's easy to move through the linked list, but when it comes to making a new array for every step, no, we don't want to have to do that if we don't have to. So instead of displaying all this stuff, instead of, oh, let me just do some undo's. Uh, yeah, instead of displaying all this stuff, I basically just want to say, like, don't do this dot display. Just do uh, we'll say this dot peak, I guess, and it's going to be a function, and all it's going to do is just return this dot pause dot number. No, number. There we go. So basically, just you know, what's there? What's what's in the uh, first position? What's at the the current position? So let's run that. Do a little peak, and yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's passing all those tests. Let's see if it passes all the hidden tests as well. Run it. And yeah, it does. Okay, so that's pretty not bad. I like that. Uh, it, it's a linked list. We've got our own custom data structure over here, which is kind of neat. And it solves the problem. And, and furthermore, like, okay, here's the thing. Like, we're rotating this. We could rotate this like a billion times. You know, like we, we could even, uh, okay, let's try this actually. So instead of n divided by two, Let's say um, n times 100 plus n divided by 2. So like if n is 10, that would be a thousand times. So is that going to run? Yeah, no problem. You know, like that, that barely seemed to take any time at all. What about 1,000? That seems like a little more demanding. Yeah, no problem. You know, it doesn't have any problem rotating through this because it's super simple. Every rotate is just saying, hey, whatever your position was, make it the next one, make it the next one, make it the next one. Just every time we need to do that, it's just one quick little operation as opposed to what we were doing over here. We were actually like doing some surgery on the array. You know, when we want to rotate, we actually have to cut off an element and then sew it back onto the other side. And it's just, you know, it's invasive. It's invasive surgery. So uh, whereas this over here, uh, less invasive, I would say. So data structures, right? Data structures. They can definitely help make your algorithms more efficient. I mean, I see data structures as being kind of like, uh, it's an issue of using the right tool for the job. You know what I mean? Like, uh, <sighs> Look, uh, let's say you needed to uh, put in a screw, okay? Maybe you want to use a screwdriver. Maybe you want to use a drill or something like that. But don't use a hammer. Don't use a hammer just because you like hammers. Don't use a hammer just because it's what you know. I mean, use the right tool for the job, right? So if you really want to make your algorithms efficient, if you want to make them run fast, if you want to make them not take up a lot of memory, use the right tool for the job. Use the right data structure. Use the right algorithm. So. That's the main thing I would say about this. Now, uh, on that note, I should probably say, as cool as this is, uh, it's really, really not the most efficient way to solve this problem over here. Because, I mean, look, if we were trying to do some more arbitrary things to the circle of numbers, if, if maybe this was a problem where we also get like, let's say an array of instructions, you know, something that's like, okay, I want you to rotate it left this many uh, values, right this many values, you know, that'd be cool. That, that could be a neat sort of problem where maybe we actually would really benefit from something like this, where we have to like rotate it a bunch of times. Uh, but in this case, uh, not quite so much because we can basically jump right to the answer. I, I mean, if you think about it, we start at two, we want it to go to seven. Well, remember how I said we'd have to multiply it, or sorry, we'd have to rotate it five times because five is half of 10. If we rotated it 10 times, we'd be back at the same position, but we want the opposite position, so we'll rotate it five times, 10 divided by two. Well, could we just add 10 divided by two? I mean, 10 divided by two is five, right? Two plus five is gonna be seven. So could we just add that? I mean, let's find out. Could we just do return uh, first number, first number plus N? Like, is that enough? Is that gonna give us the win here? Let's find out. Let me expand this a little bit because uh, we don't need that much room for this. Uh, it passed zero out of, uh, out of all these, and it's because I didn't do divided by two. So let's do divided by two like we said. Okay, it's passing half of them. That's kind of not bad. Uh, which ones is it not passing? So this one, we're giving it 
six, really what we want is zero. Uh, this one, we're giving it a 12, what we want is two. You know what, I see what happened here. We started at seven, we tried to add five to it, uh, and that gave us 12 when really what we want is two. And it's because instead of going from nine to zero, we went from nine to 10. We've got to remember to do a modulus on this thing. So we're gonna say it's first number plus n divided by two, and then we're gonna do mod n on the end of that. So let's see if that works. And yeah, that works. That works pretty efficiently, I'd say. I mean, that you can say what you want about the efficiency of like, this rotate over here versus this rotate down here and you know this one's better for time complexity but the thing is look you're not going to get better than this big old one over here it's just instant you know we just solve the problem directly that way so i would say that's probably the best way to do it again if we wanted to be open to more options here, if we wanted to make this really robust and to stand up to uh, to changes and to be able to handle whatever we might want to do with the circle, then yeah, probably this object one is the best. And uh, let me just get rid of this before I forget. The thing is, if we're paying attention to our constraints and we're really trying to optimize this thing to solve the problem, then this one's the best. That's what I'd say about it. Now, uh, one thing I just want to do before we go any further, let's just put all three on that one. We're going to switch back to the object one for a sec. We're going to run this. I want to get more into the habit of using uh, const whenever I can. So, uh, and the reason is, well, okay. I mean, basically, if we're saying that something is a let, we're basically saying, well, for now it's this thing, but it might be redefined later. Like for example, with uh, with our first node, our last, last node is a better example. So we'll say let for our last node, because basically the last node, uh, it's getting reassigned all the time, right? So it's not always the same thing. So we'll use a let for that. Whereas if we say const, like for this over here, constant node, we're not reassigning node at any point. I mean, we're basically making a new node for every iteration of the loop, but we're not gonna reassign at any point. So we can say const. That's basically allowing the JavaScript to make more assumptions. Say, oh yeah, okay, so we're not gonna reassign this. We don't need to worry about having to reassign this. So that's one fewer thing to worry about. So marginally, that's gonna make our code a little bit faster. I don't think it's gonna be super noticeable, uh, but look, we might as well go for these little micro optimizations wherever we can. Uh, as it turns out for something like, well, okay, for something like this, we can make this a constant as well. And you might be thinking, well, are you sure about that? Cause you're kind of like, you know, you're modifying both of these, like you're pushing into the array, you're popping from out of the array or shifting, I should say. Uh, are you sure? Like, isn't that changing? It doesn't seem immutable to me. The thing is, uh, the immutability is in the binding. So it's the fact that circle is always going to refer to this array. The array itself might be changing in terms of what's in it, but circle is always bound to this particular array. Now I'm curious if this would work. And it turns out, yeah, we're binding to this object here. We're not changing what the object is. We're changing some of its properties. We're changing its contents maybe, but we're not changing what the object is. And that's the main thing. So it's an immutable binding that's worth keeping in mind. And the other thing about const is I've heard in functional programming, there is no mutability. It's all immutable. So like everything you do, totally immutable. So basically you would never use like a var or a let in functional programming. You would only use const. So that's kind of cool. Uh, if, you know, for no other reason, like, again, I mentioned it, the idea that const might marginally speed up our code, but also I just want to take sort of, I would say a personal inventory to sort of say like, well, how often am I using let versus const? Like how hard would it be to just switch over to a totally functional paradigm here? Anyway, uh, I think that's about it for this one. Let's switch that back and uh, make that the sort of official one that we're going with. Yeah, cool. Let's submit that, make sure it's all uh, finalized, make sure it's official. And there we go. Okay, so that feels great. Nice job, everyone. We'll, uh, we'll move on for now. Um, yeah, let's get out of here. So let's see, next one's late ride.